I'm going to go over my workflow for ripping scenes from N64 games into Blender so that you can use them into your various projects. Now the easiest way to get models is actually pretty obvious, just by finding them online. Sites like the models resource, you can just navigate by the console and just search for the game you like and usually the more popular ones are filled with already ripped content. Or even just googling models for whatever game can help. Like, I found the basis for my Treasure Trove Cove map and contractors off some SketchUp uploading site. But unfortunately, this method isn't without its own hiccups. Oftentimes the models are messed up somewhat, or they're missing things, like when I got my Outset Island map off there, it was just the environment itself and it was missing all the extras like the trees or the mailbox or whatever. And then I spent hours figuring out ripping tools and emulators and like a billion different ways about going about it and it almost gave up until I found this TF2 map that had done the same map. So then I looked into ripping from Source games, but for Source to Unreal it required a paid program to do the conversions, so I kinda just gave up, or at least until I found this other guy who ripped that same TF2 map into a Half-Life Source map, which used an older Source engine, and that older Source engine had a freeware tool that would export the hammer files into object ones. So looking online can kinda be hit or miss, which is why I delved into ripping myself. Now I kind of went off topic there about ripping for GameCube games, so let's get us back on topic with how to actually rip for N64 content. In efforts to trim the fat, I'm not going to go over how to install everything, but it's pretty straightforward and it'll be linked in the description. Now you obviously want Blender, but what actually lets us rip will be Project 64. Then you'll need a plugin for Project 64 that will be in the description. And then you'll want the N64 mapping tool as well. Once you've downloaded all three, you're going to open up Project 64 and it's going to create a bunch of folders for you, like in its directory. You're going to open up its graphics plugin folder that it made and you're going to put the plugin in there. Now reopen Project 64 and go to its options and then configuration. Now go to plugins and choose the Nemo 64 graphics for the video plugin. Now that that's set, what you want to do is open up your C drive and create a folder named VRML. It needs to be in the C drive and it needs to be in all caps. Now go back to Project 64 and open up your legally obtained ROM. Then you're going to go to the area that you want to rip. Once you're at the area you want to capture, you're going to pause the emulator with F2. Then you're going to go into the options and graphics settings and check off the export to VRLML box. Now what you do here is pretty important. You're going to unpause it and then pause it right back again immediately so that it only advances like a frame. Once you do that, you should see that all the textures in the model will be in your VRML folder. But we still need to get it in a format Blender will like. If you haven't already, download the N64 mapping tool and then open it up. I'm going to browse to the VRML folder and then select the WRL file. Then hit Convert to Object and choose your output folder. You can save it in the VRML folder, but I like to create another one just to keep it separated. Now go to the Copy Textures tab. Hit Browse next to the object file and then select the object file you had just made. Then select the box for the Copy Textures into the Object File directory. And then also check off the box to use a specific texture directory. Then you'll browse and choose the VRML folder. Once those are entered, you'll just hit copy textures and then OK. Now you'll see all the textures have moved over into the new folder that you created for the new object. Now that it's been exported into an object file, open Blender up and we're going to import the object. If you have the default objects that come up on the start, you can just delete them at first and then go to File, Defaults, and Save Startup File so that it saves the blank canvas. And to actually import the file, we're going to go to File, Import, Wavefront Object, and then select the object that you had saved in the folder of your choice. Now I like to go ahead and toggle the viewport shading button so that it shows all the textures. Now go into fly mode by hitting Shift tilde, and you'll see that it not only rips the environment, but everything including like any characters or enemies that were on the screen at the time. Depending on what you're trying to work with, you can just select and delete everything that you don't need. I'm going to use this environment as a map for the VR game contractors, so I'm just going to delete out all the enemies and stuff.
Now this next part you don't necessarily have to do, but I like to do it just to combine it all into one piece. Select all with A, and then right click on it and hit join. Then go into its edit mode, hit A to select all again, and right click again and hit merge vertices by distance. Now go back to object mode, right click on the object, and then hit smooth surfaces. It doesn't really look like it does much here, but this helps out a lot for smaller, like, just like if you did Mario or some other character. They look less blocky this way. Now there you have it. You've imported an environment or model into Blender. From here, it's up to you. I work with a lot of Unreal Engine, so I typically export these into an FBX file. But you can export it in whichever way your project dictates. That's basically the gist of it. From here, if you encounter any issues with like textures or something, you can just try to Google the specifics, but this should be getting you on the right track. I will note that some games like Banjo-Kazooie though, occlude everything behind the camera, so piecing together the environment can be rather tedious. I'm planning on making a part 2 of this, on how to actually take the exported FBX file and import it into Unreal to create the contractor's maps, so please sub if you're interested on that down the line. But for now, I wanted to keep this video as sort of a generalized tutorial so that it could help anyone with any sort of project they're working on, VR or not. Well, I hope this was helpful. Peace out, y'all.